All right, guys, how's it going? The first six minutes of this video is just me complaining about not being able to get videos done. So feel free to click on the link or fast forward to six minutes to get to the actual Vega part. Otherwise, I just want to start this video by wishing you all a prosperous 2017. I would have wished you all a happy holidays as well. And in fact, I did in my previous five videos. That never actually got finished. I just want to talk about that right now, actually, as a lot of you have been asking me, you know, where have you been? When's the next video coming out? Now that it's the start of the new year, once again, I just want to take the opportunity to point out that it's not always possible for me to get the video finished. Just due to the nature of the video itself, and basically due to my methodology, which doesn't really allow for any mistakes. So just let me explain that. Now here's a radio and chill video that I didn't really get started. So I'm going to forget about that one for now. The Vega reveal. If you remember about a month ago, AMD revealed their new Vega architecture, or at least in terms of the machine intelligence or the artificial intelligence segment. A very nice presentation, but it wasn't really gaming focused or anything like that. Around the same time we had the Ryzen reveal, and all this took place in Austin, Texas, I believe at the new Horizon event. Now, I was invited to that event, but I didn't go. And the reason I didn't go is I dislike flying intensely. I do fly because obviously as a Scotsman and I'm living in Sweden, I do need to travel back and forth between both countries. But the idea of flying between Britain and America is absolutely terrifying to me. So I turned down the chance to go to this New Horizon event. At that event, something happened and one or two publications broke the NDA. And I was going to create a video based on this. And it was this Vega reveal video. And I actually mentioned that I would be doing this in my new Horizon video. But a few hours later, I get a call from AMD to say, don't do the Vega video. The stuff in that was under NDA and we're advising you not to do it. Now, I had no problem with not doing it because this was going to be a very speculative video anyway, based on just what I had seen. And in all honesty, I should have been under NDA anyway, had I gone there to the event. And it was pretty clear that AMD was serious about not publishing any of this NDA material. So yeah, I had no problem with it. Apart from the fact that, you know, I had already started the video. And when I say I've started the video, this means that I have done an awful lot of groundwork before then. A lot of research, that kind of thing. As I generally won't start recording until I have all the materials ready. So that was a wasted... I don't know, how many days? I'm not sure. So then I started working on the KB Lake video. You've probably seen one or two previews of KB Lake and it's very disappointing indeed. Hexus and Hard OCP had articles and I was going to include a little bit about Hardware Unbox review as well as they had one of the i3s. And as usual, I'm throwing in a bunch of other stuff, financial stuff, graphs, that kind of thing. And again, a lot of groundwork had gone into this video and I had already started it, but something had gone wrong with the recording during the recording. The audio was cut off in parts. The video had simply recorded a static image and quite a lot of it. Simply put, because of the way I do videos, this basically meant that the entire thing had to be thrown out and restarted from the beginning. So around this time, I started thinking about my driver video. This is going to be a huge video and it's one that is very much work in progress and it will be getting done for sure but don't expect to see this anytime soon. So next up after that was the Ryzen reveal. You probably all read or heard about the Canard PC Ryzen reveal, where they got hold of an engineering sample and basically benchmarked it. Obviously that's a big deal for a video and I had started doing it, but it had just got to the stage where Christmas was coming and yeah, basically I was ready for a break. So we're in between Christmas and New Year and I decided to do a video on Intel and AMD tech merger which is really all about the rumor of Intel using AMD graphics in their CPUs. Again, a massive amount of groundwork's gone into it, and the video was 11 minutes long. 11 minutes of video is at least three days worth of research, yeah? And this would have been a 20 minute video, but when I got to 11 minutes, I realized that something about it was fundamentally flawed. My premise was pretty much fundamentally flawed because of something I had forgotten all about. A lot of guys would just have gone ahead and released this video, but I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to give bad information. I may come back and rescue this video somehow. We will wait and see. The actual content of the video, very interesting, and you would have enjoyed it. But it came from a bad premise, and I just don't want to give out bad information because that's all that would matter about the video. You never get judged on the good work you do. You always get judged on the bad work. 
And uh, this would have been a little bit bad had I released this. But you can see the amount of work that has gone into this already and it has effectively been a waste of time. That is why sometimes it goes two or three weeks before I get a video out. But tech never stands still and that's really what it's all about because Vega, there's a big Vega reveal coming in a couple of days and that's what I want to talk about now. Before that, I just want to say that, you know, there are other factors as well. I'm dealing with a very noisy apartment situation which holds me back and there are other things holding me back from getting the videos done as well. I've always been up front with you and I'm just going to tell you right now that I am looking for a job as I really need to get out of this bloody apartment as this kind of stuff really needs your own studio or at least your own room which I don't even have. I am basically at the mercy of one or two real irritations that is just getting in the way of me getting the videos done. So just be aware of that, you know. If I get a job, then the channel is definitely going to suffer. But I just wanted you to know that at the start of this year. So now that I'm done whining and making excuses, let's go on with the video proper. Taking a look back at a previous Vega video I did, this was way back in May, the end of May last year. It was just an update video with lots of different stuff based on Pascal, Polaris, Vega and even Zen. And the part about Vega was based on some kind of technical financial analyst meeting where some of the top guys at AMD were talking to some of the big financial guys. Now at this time, the assumption was that Vega would arrive in October. But I never liked that rumour. And this was my analysis of what had transpired at this event. And another analyst asked, should we expect a 1080 competitor or should we have to wait for Vega for that one? Now what I noticed was they did not answer this question directly. However, what Ruth said was, we have this Polaris family and then that is followed on by another family in 2017. Of course, talking about Vega. So this seems to put paid to the rumour that Vega will be here in October. And she actually goes on to say, it is actually a very tight cadence in terms of how you would normally launch products into the market. There might be a longer time frame associated between new architectures. In other words, you would expect maybe 18 months to two years before you saw a change in architecture. But that's not going to be the case with Vega. However, I guess based on this, we could be looking at up to a year after Polaris is launched before we actually see Vega. That October rumour that was doing the rounds, I never liked it. And judging by this, we are at least seven months and probably closer to a year away from actually seeing Vega. So as you can see, I had written off the October rumour very quickly. And clearly, Vega did not arrive in October. And I also said that it would be seven months earliest, up to maybe a year away. So that's between January and May. I'm pretty confident that Vega will launch between January and May. But I do believe it's going to launch after Zen. So probably could be talking around April or May. That's when I believe Vega will launch. But the real reason I showed you this is, I firmly believe that these events where the CEOs and you know the VPs Talk to the financial guys, they can't lie at these events because they get into a bit of trouble by doing that. So it's very important to pay attention to what they say at these rather than listening to the marketing, which is what most people get. Now, truth be told, AMD has been pretty quiet about Vega and they're not giving an awful lot away. But the same two SVPs, that is Mark Papermaster and Ruth Cotter, who had presented at the May Technology Conference, once again presented at the Deutsche Bank 2016 Technology Conference in the middle of September. Now, Papermaster once again reiterated that Vega is on track for the first half of 2017 and it will be attacking the high end of the market in the high performance enthusiast end. And he also spoke of a significant performance per watt improvement. Now, significant, I'm not entirely sure, between 30 and 60 percent, or some people would say significant was 50 percent. It's difficult to say exactly what significant means. We also don't know what he's comparing it against. But what was quite interesting was that he was talking about Vega not only for gaming, but also for emerging opportunities. For example, virtual reality and also artificial intelligence. Now, we already know from AMD's official Vega announcement that they will be targeting artificial intelligence with Vega, basically getting into the same kind of markets that NVIDIA has quickly established themselves in. But in all honesty, not an awful lot was revealed here at this technology conference. At the end of November, however, Lisa Su, AMD's CEO, presented at the Credit Suisse Technology, Media and Telecom conference. And once again, when asked, she again reiterated 
the first half of 17 for the high performance graphic market. Normally when they talk about the first half, what they really mean is the second quarter. So between April and June. And this makes sense because we're all expecting Zen in the first quarter, that is between January and March. But much more interesting was what she said about Vega's performance, where she said the Vega architecture, the hardware is very, very competitive. Now at that same conference, she had said about Zen previously that they will be very competitive with the Core i7 type product line. And from what we've seen so far, it does look like AMD will be very competitive with the Core i7s. But why very competitive there? And yet Vega will be very, very competitive. So this one stuck out to me, to be frank. When somebody says something is very, very competitive, I take that to mean winning. Yesterday, a new website with a countdown to the Vega architecture preview. Two days left as I'm doing this now, and a YouTube video to watch. Now what is possibly the most interesting part about the video was right at the very beginning. It's only six seconds in, and we see a warning message saying, warning, poor Volta. Now you probably know already that Volta is Nvidia's next big architecture after Pascal. The warning also speaks of unpredictable engine performance and a bunch of other stuff. And this looks kind of familiar as well. But obviously this is a clear dig aimed at Nvidia's next architecture. Now, it's safe to say that a lot of people are expecting Vega to take on Pascal. And most of the commentary I have read does not expect Vega to beat Nvidia's Titan X. But judging by this, AMD are aiming quite a bit higher. Of course, there's always a thing about, well, maybe they don't mean this, but come on, poor Volta. If they didn't mean to do this and end up losing to Pascal, then it's just the biggest case of foot and mouth disease I have ever seen. And coming from AMD, that would be quite spectacular. I think it's safe to say though that based on Lisa's comment of being very, very competitive and on this, that they are aiming well beyond Pascal. Now last, but certainly not least, on the same website where the video appeared, there is also a word cloud, and it just looks like a reveal of the new technologies which will be available in the new Vega GPUs. Some of it we already know all about. For example, eight times capacity per stack and two times the bandwidth per pin. We know that this comes from the high bandwidth memory, or more accurately, HBM 2.0. The original high bandwidth memory, which we saw on Fury X, was capped at only four gigabytes. And that was simply because you could only get one gigabyte of HBM memory per stack. Now though, with HBM 2.0, each stack has eight gigabytes of HBM. The bandwidth is also doubled, and this adds options to HBM 2.0, allowing a 4096-bit bus to provide one terabyte per second of bandwidth, or a smaller 2048-bit memory bus to provide the same 512 gigabytes per second bandwidth which we saw on the Fury line, and which is still more than Titan X from Pascal. So that gives the option of making HBM 2.0 a little bit cheaper, and we can be pretty sure that this option will be taken in one of the Vega cards. Now stuff like four times the power efficiency and twice the peak throughput per clock. We see this all the time. When I read peak, I think maximum, yeah? So in most cases, you maybe see 30 to 40%. Right now, we simply do not know. Four times the power efficiency, that is a big number, but we don't know if this is what they mean during a typical gaming load. They also have something called rapid packed math, which again I believe is not related to gaming. But the really interesting stuff is primitive shaders, the draw stream binning rasterizer, and all the next generation engine stuff. There is so much to go over here and I simply could not do it in this video. If we look at the draw stream binning rasterizer, this appears to be AMD catching up with Nvidia, who have been using tiled rasterization since Maxwell. So this could now be a big thing for AMD. As we all know, Maxwell was a huge leap in performance and performance per watt over Kepler. So stuff like this could certainly be contributing to a much better power efficiency. High bandwidth cache and high bandwidth cache controller, I don't even want to guess at. There's something big going on here and hopefully we will find out exactly what it is soon. Possibly the most interesting thing here though is the Vega NCU. There was a very interesting post over on Reddit, which I will leave a link to in the description, which basically shows how this works. We've known about this for a while based on a patent which was revealed a few months ago, and this is very well worth reading up on. All of this stuff together could easily lead to a massive increase in performance, which to be honest, 
is what we did not see in the leaked NDA demo. I was completely underwhelmed by what I saw in that, however I now firmly believe that this was not the high-end Vega graphics card. All of this together, Lisa Sue's comment, the video mocking Volta. It all points to something very promising indeed. And there is that feeling that with Ryzen, AMD is definitely on the up. When you have this technology, you simply have to use it to its maximum. And I believe that AMD will launch a massive graphics card at the reticle limit of around 600 square millimeters. The time is right for them to take the bull by the horns and literally nothing they have said suggests that they are aiming for Pascal. I don't know if this will happen or not, but I would not be surprised to see a benchmark on the 5th of January, especially with Vega appearing to be still quite a few months away. If AMD wants to stop people from buying Nvidia graphics cards, and if they have the fast architecture, then now is the time to show it in numbers. They have literally nothing to lose as the Fury X is barely competitive with the GTX 1070 anyway, and Vega should be playing in a completely different price range. Obviously, I'm going to be paying close attention to this myself, and hopefully we will know an awful lot more after the 5th. Right, so I'm finishing this one up now. The last thing I want to say is, those of you who have been using my Amazon link, Thank you very much indeed. It is especially nice during the Christmas period. They're all performing pretty well apart from the Amazon USA one which should be doing an awful lot better than what it is and I believe the issue has been a faulty link. I contacted Amazon about it a few months ago and they told me it was okay but it doesn't really appear to be working well. Based on the size of the market, the USA revenue should be well ahead of the rest but it is actually well behind. So unless all you USA guys have abandoned me, I think there may be an issue with the old links. I've updated the link to a new link which uses my proper affiliate tag. So if you can copy this or this to your Amazon link, I would be very much obliged and sorry for the hassle. Right, 2017 has just started but it is getting very, very interesting indeed. Let's hope it continues. I'll catch you later guys.